setting up uh, a couple quick logistical things. Welcome to everybody. Um, let's see, folks, you found the food. Uh, Western Trainway needs them. They're, you don't need a key or anything. They're out across the elevators. Um, if you go outside, if you have anybody, smokers, if you forgot something in your car, the doors can lock downstairs. So grab uh, either Josh's phone number or myself or somebody before you head down. Uh, Josh is with Level 7, they're one of our sponsors. Uh, for providing the space back here, uh, one of the uh, demo tech across the street. Uh, was it the Revolution, Revolution Analytics? Thank you. The, uh, uh, usually we give a couple minutes if anybody's got any like job openings they want to announce or looking for positions, anything like that. Cover your shop or something that's not going to work So we're looking for uh, Ruby developer. Uh, somebody Drupal contract support, and a QA analyst for internally here at level seven. And we're also uh, looking to recruit a C-sharp developer, JavaScript developer, um, or SQL DBA, or a project manager for a placement with a, a client of ours in Drexville. So no, if any of those several things apply to you or anyone you know, uh, let me know. Otherwise, thanks. <laughs> no. <clears throat> do you do introductions? Do you do introductions? Or for not the really. speakers? Uh, well, for everyone, or the attendees. Oh, we don't know. We don't typically oh, go around. Okay. Um, okay. If anybody, though, in particular, like, wants to okay. uh, cool. mention if you're a particular, if you're an active job seeker or something like that, feel free to okay. cool. uh, stick your hand up. The uh, only other thing I was going to say before we get started, uh, if we can give a quick round of applause for Nick. He is. I read the announcement, but Nick is uh, moving out. He's moving out to Redmond uh, and has been the organizer here and, and kept this group credit for quite a while. So uh, doesn't want to do that from Redmond, apparently. I can't imagine why. So uh, appreciate all the help. And uh, he's even speaking on his way out. So uh, if you get a chance afterwards, uh, stop by and uh, thank him for on the back row. Thank all you. All right. Go ahead, go ahead, go. I'm going to set my timer so I don't go over. Because I think the other costs are pretty cool. uh, So I'm going to talk a little bit about weather data. Um, I kind of scrambled to get a talk together, so it kind of turned into me exploring how to pull weather data because I haven't really used it before. Um, sorry, let me show my screen here. Um, so I was able to at least pull some data, and I'll just show you some of the quick things I found. Um, so the, the API that, that I started using is the Weather Underground API, and it's pretty simple to use. Uh, you get your access key and basically you can read the lines from R. You could read it from JSON or XML. And it comes in like this where it basically has a record for each date. It could, it'll have hourly data, the temperature, the precipitation, things like that. Um, so I started going down that road and then I saw a package from a blog post in Revolution Analytics uh, it's called weather data, which basically pulls it from the same, from, from weather underground, so I ended up just using that. And I'll show you what that looks like. So, I have a lot of data preloaded over here. So, so uh, like Tim said, I'm moving pretty soon. Uh, one of the common things I get is, uh, why are you going to Seattle? Because you are above the plot size. Yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> Can someone help me with how to do that? Tools? Tools, I just did it. It's not like I have memorized. <laughs> I saw yours and I was like, oh shit, I should turn my prompt up. Uh, yeah, it's a parent. Yeah. Thank you. Is that okay? Even larger would be better for me anyway. It's <laughs> <These> old guys. <laughs> 13 and a half. Very good. Very solid. Yeah, so, so I'm moving to Seattle soon, so that everyone's like, why you move to Seattle? It always rains there. Um, and then, yeah, I'll go into that a little more. My wife's always, you know, it's, it's nice over there. That's where she's from. So that's kind of what I want to look at. Is it always rainy over there? What's the weather like? Um, so I used the weather data package. You can see the, some of the data sets over here are uh, Cleveland 2012. So I just have the daily weather data for Cleveland and Seattle. And it's actually, I think it's almost hourly, so like 20 so records a day. Uh, you can see what it looks like off like 2012. Uh, you have the time, uh, 
temperature, humidity, precipitation. I didn't use a lot of these variables, but at some point I'm sure I So what it looks like to, to pull the data, it's a pretty simple call. Um, you say get weather for date. Uh, CLE is the airport code. Like, I think there's, you know, the weather stations, you can use those. Start date, so this example I'm pulling from 2015, uh, that's two days ago, the 22nd to the 23rd. So I'll show you what that looks like. You could, I don't know if it's a limit, I just pulled it a year at a time to be safe. Um, and store those off. So this is for two days. Um, so it says getting data from weather underground. I think this is just you. The, the link, if you go here, it'll have the, the data as it's being pulled. Um, it says pulling 17 records for 622, 21 for 623. Here's the variables. Um, and then I didn't store it, so that, that's what the data looks like. So going down, I looked at the names. So this is for the Cleveland data set. And then I said do the names of the Cleveland one equals Seattle. So the only difference was they have uh, so I only duplicate my screen, so I'm not looking back. All right, so the only difference was the in the Cleveland data set they have a variable time EST, and the Seattle data set they had EST for Pacific time. So going down, I had just removed those because I looked at the time variable and. Whether it's EST or EDT, it, it's, it, that's the local time of day, so it's, it adjusts, so I just use the time frame. Uh, let's see, so then I just combined all, all the data sets, all the Cleveland records and the CLE, all the Seattle records to Seattle. Uh, I added duration, so it had time of day, and then the next measurement would be like 60 minutes later, so then I just added another variable variable to basically so that take the second record, subtract the first time, and then give a, you know, how long that record was good for. I don't want to explain it though, because I didn't use it, so it's not that important. <coughs> um, I added some, I added year, month, and date to the data set, and then a Cleveland, if it's a Cleveland, and it's Seattle, and then combine them into this WD, so let me open that. So it's the time, the temperature, everything that was there already. Uh, these conditions I'm going to use later, overcast, clear, so just what it's like at the current time of the day. Uh, here's my year, month, and day. This is for Cleveland. If I go to the bottom, it'll be Seattle. Uh, the duration variable. Uh, there were some missing values, so I fixed those. Uh, I'll post the code publicly afterwards, so don't worry about the stuff you can't see because it's cut off. Um, I use the D, D, uh, the flyer package, use the DD fly command. I guess. And uh, see, I aggregated by <coughs> the location and the year and the month and looked at the average temperature and the total precipitation. Um, so then I saw that there were 20 inches of rain in June, so that looked a little off, so I, I looked into that. So this is just looking at the June 2013 data. If I go to the top in here, I noticed that the measurements, it seems like they're almost hourly, and then a lot of them were at 51 minutes. So I didn't read the background on you know, how, how often the measurements are taken, but it seemed like there's at least one measurement every hour at 51 minutes for Cleveland. And then down here, it's, uh, you can see it's every couple minutes. I'm not sure if that's just when things change. Uh, I wasn't sure what to make of it. When I looked online, the total precipitation for this day was about 0.9 or 0.5, depending on what website you use. And a lot of differences there. So, so I ended up assuming, well, I'll show you why in a second. I assumed that uh, you know, I should just use the, the records taken at every 51 minutes and these should be added up, some sort of double measurements there. Uh, yeah, so I said, is it, is it 
regular measurements. So I took a table of the minutes. So it's using the Lubridate pack package. You could, ex uh, you could take out the minute from the date time variable. Then I made a quick plot. <coughs> Say uh, at the frequency of uh, measurements at, at the minute and the hour. And it seemed like most of them were at whatever this point was. And at which point is that? That's at 51 minutes. So that was 30,000 records out of uh, whatever the Cleveland one was, 39,000. So that's what I ended up going with. Uh, so I made a data set uh, CLE2, which is just a subset of all the 51 minute measurements. And then I looked at a histogram of the original. So you can see this is, what is this? Sorry, I don't remember what this is. <laughs> um, oh, this is how many measurements there, there were per day, I believe. So if I zoom in on that first plot, this is the original data set I brought in. So it seems like you know, most of them, there's been, been one measurement per hour at the 24, but here's all the extras when they were taken more frequently. So if I look at the CLE2, where I just looked at the 51 minute measurements. Uh, that was enough where it looks like most of them, now there's a measurement an hour a day. Uh, so did the same thing for the Seattle data set. Uh, we calculated the duration, but I didn't use it, so it's not important. Uh, combined the data sets again to this WD2, weather data to uh, fix the missing values again. So it looks like, I don't know, it's tough to read on this though. But it's, and it's the same thing. Um, so then I looked at, I used ddplot again to aggregate by location, year, month, and day. So now I'm going to have daily records, which if you do research, it's probably easier to just pull daily records from the API, but that, that wouldn't have been as fun. <laughs> <laughs> so let me see, uh, look at this data set. So Cleveland, January 1st, the low was 30 degrees, the high was 50, the average of the day is 39, uh, 0.04 inches of rain, average humidity 80. I looked up a couple of the values, they were close, close enough, and uh, it's not for homework, so I was okay with that. Uh, so a box plot, looking at the average temperature, so we have daily records here, average temperature by location and month. So, so Cleveland's in red, Seattle's in that heelish, I tried to do the Mariners color, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> this is the average temperature, so there's uh, three and a half years, so like 90 or so records for each of these box plots. Um, so basically, I, I think as we all know, Cleveland just varies a lot more. It could be, what is this, it could be 55 in January, or it could be negative five, where Seattle's a lot more consistent. So that's a, that's a thumbs up for that one. Uh, then I did the same thing with precipitation, with the daily data again. Uh, it looked, uh, this is kind of harder to interpret, uh, but you can see the, especially the bumps in Seattle in the early months. I did a slightly different view that I'd, I'd rather show. So I'll do that in a second. Um, basically, I just took a day out of the ag aggregate table and aggregated by year and month. Um, I'll come back to that, but then here's the same boss plot. Um, there's only like three points per boss plot because it's just by year, the average per month. Um, but you kind of get the idea. Uh, so, so I guess there's a, a, a dry, nice season in Seattle from what is this, May to September-ish, and then. Cleveland's kind of consistent. It could rain or snow at any time of the year, but Seattle, you, I guess you don't want to be there in the, the early, the early or winter months. So the three times that I went out there with my wife was July, August, and September. So I haven't seen that yet, so I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> um, I don't know if anyone feels like looking at this data after I make it available, I tried days with per precipitation. 
and I did my DD5, and I said take a sum of when the precipitation is greater than zero, uh, but that didn't work. So if you do look at this after, let me know why. I'm curious. Uh, let me see. Let me check my time. All right. Um, so that I looked at the conditions. So this is all of the conditions that were available in the data set, uh, and there were just a lot of them. I mean, blowing snow, drizzle, haze. I, I just wanted to know, was it clear outside? Did it, was it rainy? What was it like? So I tried to group some of them. It's not perfect, but I said, so the condition's clear, it's clear, which I think had a couple thousand, I don't know, let's say that about at least 20% of the records or so. And then semi-clear, I said that's overcast, mostly cloudy, scattered clouds, fog, patches of fog. Uh, it's not the most scientific way. And then I created, uh, added some more variables to my data set, so clear, if it was in that clear, um, if it was in the clear factor, semi-clear, and ended up, uh, let me show you what that looks like. Semi-clear because that one was overcast, so, so that's kind of how that worked. Uh, and then I said to create another data set, WD3, where I'm just looking at the hours of 6 to 10 at night because I'm not going to be outside at night anyway, so I don't care if it rains. Uh, it would be interesting to see if there was you know, a difference, I guess. Uh, so so, I, so I, now I'm just looking at by I'm just taking the data set and assuming there's an hourly record for every day. I'll show you what this means. Uh, so this is using ggplot stacked bar plots. So Cleveland on the left. Um, so this would say like, it looks like 5% of the days, 5% you know, of the time in January, it's clear. Um, you know, based off my grouping, it's probably wrong. Um, and then, so 25 or 30 percent of the time, it's it's no good. Sorry about that. Um, so I did the same thing over here with Seattle, and it looks like it's a lot better in Seattle. Like the other chart, chart kind of showed, uh, like summer, late summer months, it doesn't rain a lot during the summer. Um, I guess what it didn't show, which I thought there would have been more rain in the Seattle winter months, but that might just be with my grouping. Kind of where I was looking at, that's kind of where I left off. So, if you haven't played with weather data before, there's this weather data package. Uh, if you want to try the API, there's a lot. I think there's a lot of other things you can pull, like forecasts. Uh, they have a free version. I thought I had it up, but no. Um, there's a free version. I think if you make like under 500 calls per day, 10 calls per minute, then that's fine, or you can pay like $20 and you can get a lot more data. Um, and then there's other weather packages, and it was kind of overwhelming. I got it that time. Um, this is overwhelming how much, how many different sources there are, so I'm curious if, uh, I don't know if anyone wants to talk afterwards about the sources they've used or recommendations. I'd be glad to hear. Thank you. Cool question. Only 